In this video, we start a new chapter where we look at the network layer, specifically the data plane. Let's get started. In this video, we're beginning chapter four, which is one of two chapters on the network layer. As before, we're using slides provided by the authors of the book, Jim Kuros and Keith Ross. As we talk about the network layer, we'll follow a similar format to that which we've used in previous chapters. First, understanding the principles of operation, followed by specific implementations of internet protocols. The network layer service model includes forwarding and routing packets to get them to the destination, as well as the assignment of internet addresses. Understanding the network layer is also tightly coupled to understanding internet architecture as a whole. As far as implementation specifics, we will cover both IPv4 and IPv6, as well as middle boxes that provide services beyond those which are supplied by the native IP protocols. We can break down the network layer functionality into the data plane and the control plane, each of which has distinct responsibilities and significant complexity to discuss and understand. So this chapter will focus on the data plane and the following chapter will focus on the control plane. So as we proceed through chapter four in the next few videos, we will cover topics including how a router functions, the design of the IP protocol, including how addressing is handled and comparing IPv6 with IPv4. And then we will look at software defined networking, including the open flow protocol. And then we will wrap up with the topic of middle boxes. So going back to this architectural picture that we've been using since the beginning of the course, we are now focused on services provided by the network layer or layer three. The network layer receives segments from the transport layer and encapsulates them into datagrams to be forwarded over the network. On the receiving side, it decapsulates the segments from the datagrams and passes them up to the transport layer. Unlike the transport layer, which existed in hosts at the edge of the network, but not in routers, the network layer exists in every internet device, whether it's an edge device or a core device. As the datagrams pass through routers, they examine the header fields of the network layer and make forwarding decisions to move the datagram from the input port to the correct output port so that it will eventually reach its destination. The function that I just mentioned is called forwarding, where an individual datagram arrives at a router's input link and is moved to the correct output link. The function that routers are named for is distinct from this. The routing algorithm determines what path packets should take from their source to their destination. The routing algorithm provides the data needed for the forwarding operation to make the correct decisions. If we look at the traffic flow analog, forwarding is like navigating a single interchange or intersection, whereas routing is the process of planning an entire trip. So in this chapter, we will be focusing on functions related to forwarding. And when we reach the control plane chapter later on, we will focus on functionality related to routing. So the data plane and the functions that go with it are local to each router, and this determines how an individual datagram is forwarded from input port to output port. The control plane, on the other hand, is network-wide. It determines how the datagrams are routed between routers and is responsible for things like making sure the datagrams don't go in circles. When we look at more detail on the control plane, we'll see that there's two distinct approaches. The traditional distributed approach, which is implemented directly in routers, and the centralized software-defined networking approach, which is implemented in remote servers that control the routers. In the traditional control plane approach, the routing algorithm has components in every single router. And so we can divide each router into data plane and control plane functionality. We have local forwarding tables, which provide a mapping between datagram destinations and output ports. While in the control plane portion of the router, we have a routing algorithm, which is a program that runs and communicates with other routers in the network in order to determine end-to-end -end paths for datagrams to take. When those paths are determined, the information is distributed into the local forwarding tables at each router. And so we can draw a line of separation between control plane functions and data plane functions. The software defined networking approach takes a different strategy. So while the IP protocol itself remains unmodified, each individual router only performs local forwarding functions and the control plane is removed from the individual routers and centralized in remote servers. Those remote servers populate the forwarding tables and install them in the routers. So in that case, the division between control plane and data plane also aligns with the separation between devices. As a note, in the software-defined networking model, the individual routers are often referred to as switches. So software-defined network switches, or in terms of the most common protocol, OpenFlow, you may hear the term OpenFlow switches. So OpenFlow switches are routers that don't have built-in control plane functionality. Now let's talk about our service model for the network layer. It's important to note 
that historically there have been different network layers. While IP is certainly the most common one today, it was not always so. And different network layers offered different service models. Some examples of these services might be guaranteed delivery or guaranteed delivery with an upper delay bound. We could also look at service models in terms of a flow of datagrams and not just individual ones. In that case, we might want to see in order delivery of datagrams as well as some guaranteed minimum bandwidth and restrictions on the acceptable amount of jitter. However, as we've mentioned before, the service model offered by the internet is a best effort model, meaning it makes no guarantees on bandwidth, loss, order, or timing. So higher layers of the network stack are responsible for dealing with any issues that arise from these events. In contrast, we see that network layers like ATM were able to offer these sorts of guarantees. Services such as ATM CBR might be suitable for offering a digital telephone service. There have also been RFCs that would enable the internet protocol to provide some optional guarantees. However, these are not available over the public internet and would only be deployed within the bounds of one institution's network. In practice, what has happened is the simplicity of the internet model has allowed it to become the dominant network layer. ATM and other network layers that offered guarantees have died out due to their extra complexity and cost. Because of the relatively low cost, the core of the internet is able to be over-provisioned, providing more bandwidth than applications demand at any given time. And this over-provisioning of bandwidth means that most of the time the service is good enough for most of the applications that people want to adopt over the internet. A major part of enabling the internet to scale well has been the approach taken by content distribution networks to locate services in many locations as close to clients as possible, thus reducing the amount of bandwidth that must flow over the core of the network. Congestion control from applications running over TCP with elastic bandwidth demands also greatly helps in enabling the available bandwidth to meet demands. So while it seems like we're missing a lot by not having guarantees on things like loss or delay or bandwidth, in practice, it's very difficult to argue with the success of the internet model. That wraps up our overview of the network layer. In the next video, we'll begin digging into the details of what's inside a router. See you then. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it to be useful, please click the like button. To be notified when more videos are posted for this class, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell.